Good day and welcome to you all. My name is Max Edkins from the Connect for Climate program at the World Bank. We're coming to you live from Vietnam at the Jeff Assembly. This is a series of live discussions on, uh, on the Connect for Climate Facebook page, looking into the global challenges, looking into the global commons, what are the great advances and how do we really accelerate transformative action to solve some of our global issues. Um, with me today I've got Suma Chakarabhati. Thank you so very much for joining us. Um, Suma is the president for the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, which is one of the multilateral financing organizations. Um, so maybe just to frame the discussion a little bit, could you explain a little bit how the EBRD is involved in the global commons? What is your role in financing some of the solutions that we so urgently need um, on the environmental landscape and then also on, on addressing climate change? Okay, well that's a big question in itself, uh, Max. Let me have a go. So the EBRD was created back in 1991, really to help one of the most energy intensive regions of the world, the post-communist Eastern Europe world, to uh, move towards full sustainable market economies. So we're the first multilateral that had the environment actually in the uh, constitution of the organization back in 1991. It had never been done before. And so from day one, we've taken the environment very, very seriously. But we really, really, I think, started moving on this through the Sustainable Energy Initiative, uh, which was established after the Glen Eagle Summit. Back in 2006, we started this initiative. And for the last 12 years, this has been a strong part of what we do. And I would say, you know, amongst the multilaterals, we've shown some great leadership, particularly in terms of what we do with the private sector. Nearly 60% of the investments in the sustainable energy area are in the private sector. We have a target of 40% of all our investments uh, should be in the green economy by 2020. We achieved that target last year with 43%. So we have a nice problem in a way. Can we do even better going forward? <laughs> it's going to be tough, but we're really committed, therefore, to doing that. And I think we've shown particularly that there is a way of getting the private sector interested in this agenda, which is important for all of us, for our planet, but also for them to make money from doing so as well. They need to be profitable at the same time as doing good. And, and this is really the big excitement that we see looking ahead is how do we achieve the sustainable development goals? How do we get the businesses more in tune and aligned with that? And how do we create the right investment climate for that? So um, you, you mentioned the green economy. What exactly is that? And, and what is uh, green financing, green bonds? And, and what's the role of the e e ERB uh, D ERB. on that? So, look, I mean, the Sustainable Development Goals, I think, are a fantastic advance on the Millennium Development Goals in that they really do try and encompass the whole set of activities, the 17 targets and many, many, uh, you know, objectives underneath it. They try to encompass a whole set of activities that are, add up to sustainable development. It's a much more holistic agenda and within which, of course, climate change is fundamental because it's one of these cross-cutting objectives that cuts across everything. So it's really important to that. But the second thing that's obviously happened is the recognition that we cannot achieve this agenda just by grant aid alone. The old-fashioned grant aid, public sector-focused approach is not going to cut it. So we need to find ways, instruments, that will actually leverage, crowd in the private sector. And that is what EBRD has been trying to do for a long, long time. That is what we, you know, is our business model, if you like. So I think What's happened, therefore, is the EBRD business model has become rather center stage to this agenda in a way that perhaps wasn't thought of 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and what does green economy mean? It's a whole set of activities. I mean, from, us, from our point of view, there's a way to operationally what we do. We can do direct financing of companies. We can work to, to finance companies through banks. But essentially, what we're really trying to do, uh, you know, not just banks and companies, mu municipalities as well, yeah. sub-sovereign lending we do, which is high, highly unusual in the MDB space. With all of these activities, what we're trying to do is show that the payback period from investing in the technologies uh, and other things that would actually, you know, give us a really good uh, impact in terms of CO2 emissions, the payback period has become much shorter and therefore you don't have to be as frightened in investing in these things as you might have been 20 years ago. And you can actually make a return much more quickly as well. But on top of that, and here the Jeff is really important as well, has been the whole sort of how do you build capacity in many of these uh, companies, governments, ministries to try and actually attack this agenda. 
you really do need the technical assistance to do that. You need blended finance and you need a mixture of grant and loan finance, market-based pricing to do that. And I think the Jeff can help us with that. And the seventh replenishment, the fact that Jeff is focusing now very much on private sector, shows, I think, where we've all come from and where we're heading. Absolutely. I, this whole uh, directive of maximizing finance for, for development is, is really crucial to accelerate uh, action around the global commons. So, so you've highlighted sustainable energy as being a relatively uh, successful uh, space where the private sector has gotten involved. How are we going to take those lessons learned into the other sectors that are required? So the landscapes, the transport, and, and, and the other um, components that will lead to a more sustainable future. Well, one of the things we've been trying to do is move not just to having the Sustainable Energy Initiative, we also have what we call the Sustainable Resource uh, Initiative as well. And that's really what the SRI is about the whole industrial process, if you like. So the use of water in the industrial process, not just energy, but other types of materials use as well. That's very, very important as well. And I think the next uh, Jeff replenishment, the seventh one, you're going to see proposals coming forward that take that further forward. But it's not just about, let's say, sectors like energy as well. It's also about different types of uh, governments as well. So thinking about city governments. Mm -hmm. You know, here we're going to have a fantastic panel, I think, on sustainable cities as well. And the idea now is not just to work at national level, but also to think at city level as well for all these things. So working with mayors who really have an agenda for change is very important. We have the Green Cities Framework in the BRD, but this works with the C40, the Global Covenant of Mayors and so on. So there's a real push now to get this, you know, this real approach embedded at city level as well as at national level. So, I mean, it, it really feels like we're in an exciting time where we've had the Paris Agreement, we've got the SDGs, and increasingly we've got greater awareness from the business side and from the public. So, um, what is your message for uh, maybe a younger audience, we're on Facebook Live right now, for them to be a part of this new uh, sustainable, low-calm and resilient economy? How can they contribute? How can they be a part of, uh, of being... Uh, the drivers of the new businesses, the entrepreneurs, what is their role? One fundamental point I would make to the young people, this is your future. Uh, I'm 59 years old, they're going to inherit the world, and it's for them really to shape the world. So they can get involved in a number of ways. One is through their own consumption patterns, how they behave, how, how, you know, how they do it, basically, how they live life. But secondly, also by really getting involved, whether it's through civil society, through organizations like mine, through becoming you know, people who work in corporate finance, whatever the, the role they want to have as policy people, as thinkers, they've got such a huge contribution to make. The difference for them is there is a future in prospect now because there are lots of things being developed that I would not have thought 20 years ago would have been possible. So the future is limitless, but it's their future. So they should shape it. Absolutely. And with those words, I'd, I'd like to thank you so very much for, for being with us and, and sharing your messages of hope and how the EBRD is working with the Jeff Assembly and really driving this transformative agenda, driving this uh, exponential change that we desperately need to build a sustainable future. Thank you so very much. Thank for you very us. much.